if you are under a lot of stress, it's not that you, you that stress blocks fat. You might hear some you know internet gurus online saying, well, if you're stressed out, then you're not going to lose body fat. That's not true. That's not how that works. But if you are stressed out, you are going to hold on to water weight, and that water weight is going to quote unquote mask the fat that you're losing. Hey, what's going on? Shane, Shane Hubbard Fit. Today we're going to be talking about weight fluctuations and all the different reasons why your weight is going to go up and down, up and down while you're trying to lose weight. So before you finish watching this video really quickly, I would love to know in the comments which one of these graphs you think looks the most like you. Now the reason why this is so important is because a lot of times when we see our weight go up, we assume that there's something that we did the day prior that caused our weight to go up. We also assume that that weight change, that increase in weight, is fat weight and that we did something wrong to cause that to happen. Let me just start off by saying that you could be in a calorie deficit for an entire week and not lose a single pound. And we'll talk about reasons why that happens. But if you're doing all the right things with a calorie deficit, with protein intake, with exercise, you don't have to worry so much about what your weight looks like on a day-to-day -day basis. And what I hope to teach you is why, your why there's change in your weight on a day-to-day -day basis. So you don't always assume that you're getting fatter when your weight goes up or you're necessarily dropping a whole bunch of fat when your weight goes down. And we'll talk about some trends and, and what a typical weight loss you know, journey might look like on the scale when you graph it all out. So first let's talk about these five common weight loss fluctuations and reasons why our weight will fluctuate pretty commonly. Okay, the first one's gonna be carbohydrates. When you eat carbohydrates, those carbs act as a sponge to soak up water, all right? And it stores that water in your muscle cells, all right? This is very common, this is always going to happen. And so if you eat more carbs one day than you do, you know, the prior days, your weight will most likely go up, okay? This is not a bad thing, this is water weight. Water weight fluctuates very often. It goes up and down, up and down throughout the entire day. If you were to weigh yourself, let's say six times in a single day, you would see an up and down weight change. Sometimes your body's gonna store more water, sometimes it's gonna store less water. It depends on what you eat, your stress, how much water you drink, how much coffee you drink. There's a lot of reasons why your weight is going to fluctuate, and carbs is one of them. Now, this doesn't mean that you need to go on a low-carb diet in order to avoid this, okay? That's not the problem. In fact, those that do a low-carb diet and or a keto diet, what will typically happen is they'll drop weight very quickly, and then it will just stall. All right, because there's only so much water weight you can lose on your body before you know, you're not storing as much water anymore through carbohydrate consumption. So just because you hear about your friend who did keto and dropped 50 pounds, let's say, and in the first you know, 10 days they lost you know, 15 pounds, that's water weight, okay? Now eventually if they kept in a calorie deficit and they stuck with the keto diet, they can definitely lose weight. There's nothing wrong with it. But when you hear about rapid weight loss, it typically comes from things like dropping carbohydrates because carbohydrates help you store water. Number two, exercise. When you exercise, there's an inflammation response. So you know when you, you work out and you get sore and your body you know, feels tired and heavy? Well, that a lot of times is what's called the inflammation response of exercise. Now, part of the inflammation response is to retain water, okay? It's just, it's just what happens when you lift weights, okay? Your body is going to retain water after you know bouts of exercise. So if you're someone who started to exercise recently and you're weighing yourself every day and you notice that your weight isn't changing or it's even going up, don't freak out. This is very, very common. In fact, if you're exercising, especially for the first time, you will gain some weight from water retention, all right? But just know that it's water and not fat. You didn't get fatter by exercising. That doesn't happen. But what you probably have noticed is that your weight has gone up and you might even feel a little bit puffier, right? Especially in the areas that you feel most sore, like your legs or your glutes or even your stomach, like if you do you know, a, an intense core exercise routine. So exercise can cause weight gain in the form of water retention. This is nothing to worry about, it's just part of the process, okay? Number three, salt intake, all right? Salt intake, if you consume more salt, let's say, you know, on Tuesday as opposed to, you know, prior days beforehand, your weight will likely go up a little bit. Now, how much it goes up depends, but on average, what you'll experience is a weight increase, 
okay? So if you're eating saltier foods, let's say that all week you were eating your normal amount of salt, and on the weekend you had two or three slices of pizza, you stayed in your calorie deficit, you did all the right things, and then on Sunday and Monday, you weighed four pounds heavier, okay? You might freak out, you might associate that weight gain with the pizza slices you had because it was the most common outlier and you, it was your quote unquote, uh, you know, cheat meal or whatever. Well, that salt increase is going to retain more water. So very similar to carbs and exercise, the retention of water through more consumption of sodium causes your weight to go up. It's not that your weight went up because of fat, it just went up because of water, all right? And something to keep in mind as we, you know, go through these is that when you are weighing yourself here on out, these are the types of things that I want you to consider. I want you to consider your carbohydrate intake. I want you to consider if you exercised recently. I want you to consider if you consumed more salt than the prior days, okay? These are all things that I want you to think about when you step on the scale and you see that weight increase. Because when you start to do this and you start to eliminate possibilities of fat gain, which, you know, on a daily basis, if your weight goes up, it's not fat, then you can start to reason why your weight is going up, which will help you mentally overcome the peaks that you might see during your weight loss journey. All right, number four, a late dinner. There's nothing wrong with eating late. It doesn't store more body fat than eating at an earlier time, but it can influence your weight if you weigh yourself first thing the next day. Okay? And that's because if your food is being digested in your stomach, it needs a certain amount of time to you know, go through the entire digest process. Well, if the time is shorter between when you last ate and when you weigh yourself than it is on average, then your weight mo most likely will be a little bit higher. So like if I ate a meal typically at 5 p.m. and then let's say on the weekends I didn't eat until 9 or 10 maybe, maybe I had a late night snack with some friends or whatever it might be, the next morning when I might weigh myself, there's a good chance that because I ate later, that weight is gonna show up on the scale when I weigh myself, okay? Because the food hasn't been digested as fully as it normally is before I weigh myself, okay? So again, there's nothing wrong with eating late if you keep it you know, within your, your calorie amounts, but it can influence your day-to-day -day scale weight, okay? So that's a good thing to keep in mind. All right, the last one we're gonna talk about is stress. Okay, this is a very big one, and we'll also talk about some special considerations when it comes to stress. The way in which stress affects your weight is through water retention, okay? You'll start to see a pattern here, is all of these affect, in some kind of way, water retention. If you were stressed out, your body is secreting a hormone called cortisol, and one of the hallmark effects of cortisol is water retention. And your body does this because when it's under stress, it wants to hoard or it wants to um, store the most valuable resources for survival. Next to, or I should say above nutrition or food, water is the most valuable resource. So your body is going to store water while you're stressed. So let's say you go through an entire week of you know, stress at work, stress at home, maybe this whole quarantine thing that's happening is stressing you out, everything that's going on in the world is stressing you out, you are going to hold on to more water weight. It doesn't mean you aren't losing fat, it just means that you're storing more water. So you could very well be losing body fat, but because you are storing water, it doesn't show up on the scale the way you would you would expect it to, to show up, okay? So that's something that's very important to, to understand is that if you are under a lot of stress, it's not that you that stress blocks fat. You might hear some you know internet gurus online saying, well, if you're stressed out, then you're not gonna lose body fat. That's not true, that's not how that works. But if you are stressed out, you are going to hold on to water weight and that water weight is going to quote unquote mask the fat that you're losing. It's a very important thing to understand and it's, if you know that mental and you can practice understanding that concept, it's gonna be a lot easier to go through your fat loss journey identifying these different things that can influence your weight, either staying the same or going up and understand that they're all related to water and the different ways that our body stores water depending on things like carbs and exercise and salt and when we eat. So now we're gonna go over some special considerations and these are three things that I think is, is really important to understand, especially if you're a woman, because women's bodies are different than men's bodies and typically these are going to affect women or at least the first one's gonna affect women more than men. All right, so the first one is Shark Week, also known as that time of the month or your period. Your body is going through a lot of changes and so there's a very high likelihood that you are going to be masking 
any type of fat loss you're going through with water retention. So similar to stress, your body is going under, you know, a, a pretty stressful experience. It's, it's temporary, but it's changing. It's, you know, altering things. And so your period will mask any fat that you're losing through water retention. Okay. So if you step on the scale and it's your time of the month and all week you haven't lost any weight or you've gained weight, don't freak out. Okay. It's not that you're just inherently gaining more fat because you're here on your period, but it is, something to keep in mind that when you are on your period, don't expect the scale to go down. Again, it doesn't mean you're not losing fat. It just means that the scale is showing that you're, you're basically staying the same with your weight because of that retention of water. I know it can be challenging mentally to just get through your head and, and coach yourself through that, but it's a very important thing to remember if you're on a weight loss journey and you're on your period that, that week. The second one I want to talk about is stress and water retention. So I, I sort of cover that already. But I wanted to cover it again and remind you again that if you're under a lot of stress, okay, your body is going to hold on to water. It's just the nature of what happens when our bodies are stressed. Once that stress period is over, you drop a bunch of weight. You lose like three or four pounds. Okay, that happens sometimes. I've seen it happen. I've coached people that have have seen that. The reason why I wanted to reemphasize this again is because if you're not noticing changes on the scale right away and you know that you are in a stressful time right now, whether it's family or work or both or whatever it might be, that if you're going through a lot of stress, do not expect the scale to just suddenly start dropping weight. It doesn't mean that you have to change your calories. It doesn't mean they have to change your exercise. It doesn't mean you have to change anything. It just means that you're going to have to wait a little bit longer to see that change in the scale because your body is under a very stressful time right now. And as a result, it's retaining a lot of water. All right, the last one I wanna talk about under special considerations is lack of sleep. Lack of sleep is stressful to the body. Lots of things are stressful for the body. It's why it's so important to try to get all these things aligned one at a time. Because you have a lack of sleep, it can also influence things like exercise or eating behavior. And as a result, when you are experiencing a lack of sleep, for whatever reason, you will notice that your weight really isn't going to drop that much, okay? It's probably gonna flat line. It might even go up a little bit, all right? And this is, again, because stress affects water retention and water retention affects our overall weight. It doesn't mean that if you lack sleep that you're getting fatter unless as a result of less sleep you are eating more calories than you burn. And that's another thing to keep in mind, by the way, that a lot of times people blame stress for gaining fat when really stress causes us to eat more and exercise less or exercise less and eat the same or exercise pretty much not at all and eat more, right? A lot of times the, the relationship is inverse. Very rarely does a lack of sleep or stress cause us to exercise more and eat less or at least, you know, somewhat less. So the effects of lack of sleep affect stress, which then affects our behavior. And that's an important thing to understand. Being stressed out does not block you from burning body fat. A lack of sleep does not block you from burning body fat. It can influence your behavior that then influences either your calorie intake or your calorie output. That's all you need to know about those things. Okay, so we'll put that to bed right there. All right, now I'd like to talk about these trends. Now, these are common trends that I see with my clients when it comes to their weight. All right, and there's no real rhyme or reason to all of these. They all have different variables, but I do want to touch on a couple of things that are important about these graphs. So this first graph, graph over here, on the bottom here, we have days going uh, horizontally, and then we've got your weight going up and down. So as you can see, this person began weighing themselves right here, and as they went through their weight loss journey, they saw a lot of different changes in their weight. This person saw an immediate drop and then a spike, and then another drop, and then it flatlined for a couple of days, and then they saw a really big drop, and then they saw a really big increase. Okay, I wanna to touch on that really quickly. If your weight loss graph looks something like this, and you start losing weight, and you say, wow, it's really working. You feel good, think you're, you're motivated, and then all of a sudden you start gaining weight. That is where most people quit, because they do not understand why their weight would drop and then go right back to what, where it was, for the most part, uh, you know, last week or a couple days ago. So these peaks are the most common places where you'll quit. And what's important to understand is these peaks have everything to do with these things on this list. Okay. It's all water retention. 
It could be carbs, it could be exercise, it could be salt, it could be late night eating, it could be stress. Okay? Do not let these things that influence water retention ruin your consistency. Mentally, I know it can be hard to see your weight go down and then go right back up. You can lose four pounds in a day and then by the end of the week you gained it all back. That is not a sign that you are doing the wrong thing. Okay? Do not freak out about that. It is completely normal. Every single client that I've coached has seen a graph or some kind of, of, of you know, graph that resembles what this looks like. Okay, so don't freak out too much about it. The other thing to keep in mind is even within all of these peaks and valleys, this person from day one to the last day that they measured has what's called a downward trend. So from the first graph to the last weigh-in, their trend is going downward. So it doesn't matter what, what's going on in the middle so long as the trend is going from left to right in a downward trend. Okay, that's what's most important, not these little changes in the middle. Okay, it's the downward trend. All right, let's move on to graph number two. Now, this person is seeing a little bit more steady loss and some maintenance, so some flatter lines, and then some serious loss, and then what's another common uh, thing to happen is what's called a plateau. I didn't have enough room to write an entire week, but oftentimes what I'll see with my clients is that their weight will plateau for sometimes up to two weeks. And it really starts to you know, bug them because they're putting in all the work, they're doing all the right things, and yet the weight isn't changing, the weight isn't budging. And so what I do is I go through them, I say, okay, well, let's look at your carbohydrates. Have they changed at all since you know, the last two weeks? Um, your exercise. You know, a lot of times if clients are working with exercise and nutrition, what I'll tell them is, well, you know, we just started a new workout routine. Or, you know, you've been working out more consistently, so your body's adapting again, it's getting more inflamed and you're retaining more water. Sometimes they'll have saltier meals. You know, like I said, sometimes on the weekends they'll have something that has a little bit more salt in it, like a pizza or a hamburger or, you know, some kind of fast food, whatever it might be. And as a result, they're going to retain more water the next couple of days. Late dinners, this is less common to see, you know, every single uh, day or for long periods of time, but it can happen. The most common reason why your weight plateaus is because of stress. Now remember, when your weight plateaus, it doesn't mean your fat loss is plateauing. It just means your weight on the scale is plateauing. You could very well be losing fat below this. It just doesn't show up on the scale. The, the solution to a plateau is to just keep going. Okay? You don't have to you know, have a different supplement or drink less water or you know, eat less carbs. That's not the goal. The goal is to stick to your calorie deficit and be patient. Those are the only things you need to know, especially when it comes to what the graph is showing you on you know, when it comes to weight loss. The next thing I want to talk about, or the next trend, is where you're starting to see a lot of plateaus. All right, so you, you have kind of a plateau in the beginning, you drop weight, you see another plateau for a little bit longer, you see all these different plateaus, okay? Now, remember also that a plateau, it doesn't mean that there's anything that you need to change specifically, okay? Like I mentioned a little bit uh, before this, carbs, exercise, salt, late eating, and stress can all f influence your weight. So if your graph has a lot more of these flat line areas, don't worry about it, okay? Eventually what you'll see is this drop again, okay? Then you might see a flat line area again, and then you might see a, a peak where you gain weight. Again, this is where people typically will give up because they don't understand why their weight would go back to where it was after they just lost that weight. Okay? If you can avoid quitting at these peaks, wherever you see them on your scale, you will have success. One of the things that I like to tell my clients is for the next month, so when we first start working together, for the next month, I don't want you to even pay attention to your weight loss trend. All I want you to focus on is weighing yourself every single day, and sticking to your calorie deficit and the other habits that we're working on, okay? If you can do that, by the end of the 30 days, I will tell you whether or not you are losing weight, okay? So for example, all of these graphs have a downward trend, even though they're different in the way they spike and plateau. That's why I drew three of them. I wanted you to see that, as you can see, all the trends are going down. This person's losing weight a little bit faster, this person is still losing weight, but they're having more peaks and valleys. This person's having a lot of plateaus, but as you can see from day one, they're still losing weight. The, the trend is a little bit slower, but it's still a downward trend, okay? 
Now, if, if I was to draw something here, you know, where your weight would be like this, and it's kind of going up and down here like that, there's not a lot of weight loss there. That's a flat line for the most part, right? It's a very, very slow amount of weight loss. At that point, what you could do is go, okay, well, I've been consuming this many calories. I haven't seen weight loss in a month. Maybe my calories are at maintenance because if my weight is staying the same, my calorie input to my calorie output is the exact same. So you could either drop your calories a little bit lower, or if you had more room to add exercise or things that burn calories, you could do that. And then you would start seeing a downward trend that looks a lot more like that. Okay. Now, if you were to, let's use this graph for now. Let's see, let's say you would have a trend that looked like this and that continually went upward. That's how you know you are consuming more calories than you burn. So the first thing I would recommend doing is looking at your calories, because typically speaking, you're, you're probably consuming too many calories or you're an absolute couch potato, okay? If you're not burning more calories than you consume, then you won't be in a calorie deficit. So your trend and your weight loss trend overall can tell you a lot about the adjustments you need to make. But if you get caught up in the day-to-day -day changes where one day you lose four pounds, the next day you gain five pounds, if you quit when your weight goes back up, you're never gonna get to the point where you actually see sustainable fat loss. The secret to fat loss is not doing some kind of special pill or special supplement or working out in a special way or eating special fat burning foods. It's about patience and a calorie deficit. If you can have those two things, weight loss is actually gonna be very easy. All right, so that is my video on weight fluctuations. Thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you in a future video.